at least eight human species have gone extinct before us. Homo habilis, erectus, heidelbergensis, neanderthalensis, rhodesiensis, floresiensis, luzonensis, naledi, and the Denisovans. Wow, I guess it's our turn then. Well, I can think of at least five cool ways your species might go extinct. It's said that the average species lifespan for mammals is about 1 million years. We know this from a variety of sources. Fossil records analysis, mutation rates and molecular clocks, biogeographical data, historical extinctions, and statistical models. Modern humans, that is, Homo sapiens, seems to have been around for about 315,000 years, with some of the oldest remains uncovered in 2017 in Morocco. Meanwhile, our cousin species, the Neanderthals, they existed for about 350,000 years. So as a mammal and a human species, natural evidence suggests we have somewhere between 35,000 and 685,000 years to go. Of course, we have big brains and big bombs, and you might not be mistaken to think that when it comes to Homo sapiens, all previous rules and observations are out the window. Unlike every other species on Earth, even our extinct cousins, I'm pretty sure we get to pick our own fate. Today, we'll take a look at five cool ways we can go extinct. Let's engage. Take your seat. The human adventure is just beginning. Let's start by defining extinction, because it doesn't just mean everybody dies. Def, if you please. Extinction is the dying out or termination of a species or a larger taxonomic group. This process occurs when there are no living individuals of a known species or when the species loses the capacity to reproduce and recover. Extinction can result from a variety of causes, including environmental forces, evolutionary changes, random genetic drift, or adverse selection pressures. This natural process plays a significant role in the evolution of life, as it can open up ecological niches and opportunities for new species to emerge. Okay, today we're going to concentrate on that last part, the emerging of something new. On December 8, 2023, the US Food and Drug Administration approved the world's first CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing therapy. The treatment, called CASGIVI, targets sickle cell disease by helping patients produce healthy hemoglobin. Another gene editing therapy for children with Duchenne muscular dystrophy was approved earlier in the year. If you're watching this, you probably have a basic idea of CRISPR genome editing technology. It's a method for altering the DNA of organisms in a precise and targeted manner. It uses a system originally found in bacteria which includes a molecule called CRISPR, clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats, and a protein like Cas9. This system can be programmed to find a specific sequence in an organism's DNA and then cut the DNA at that precise spot, allowing scientists to add, remove, or replace genetic material, thus enabling precise genetic modifications. To make a new species, the changes would have to be heritable, are they? I think the answer to this is, they are if they're designed to be, and sometimes even if they're not. Non-heritable CRISPR editing involves making genetic changes that are isolated to certain tissues and are not passed down to future generations. I think most of the current work in CRISPR is being done in this area. But controversy on heritable changes extends worldwide. In some countries, germline gene editing is banned. In others, it's not so tightly regulated. Even if not intended to be inheritable, CRISPR genome editing can potentially introduce unwanted genetic alterations that are inheritable, posing long-term health risks. Studies have shown that unintended DNA changes right near the targeted editing sites in human embryos using CRISPR and Cas9 system, um, so these unintended mutations occurring directly at the edit location are a significant risk that might go undetected with our standard testing methods. As the science of human genetic modification advances, there will be both forces pushing for designer babies, those with selected traits such as gender, appearance, intelligence, or disease resistance, and 
the simple elimination of suffering in babies diagnosed with debilitating genetic defects. And then there are those Chinese scientists who put tardigrade DNA into human stem cells. Who knows what those guys are after? Given time, and remember, these technologies will advance and extend for many centuries and millennia to come. Both intended and unintended genetic changes may spread and compile over time until the species we are today is extinct and Homo novus supplants us. There are a variety of ways in which humans are becoming more artificial and cybernetic. Simple mechanical enhancements include things like pacemakers, dental and cochlear implants, insulin pumps, and artificial lenses. I myself have model SN6 AT4 optical lenses replacing my natural ones and allowing me to see without cataracts, albeit still with glasses, but seeing is a vast lifestyle improvement, as are my two dental implants, which are a lovely help with chewing. Today, others have had their lives improved with advanced prosthetic limbs, medical exoskeletons, and deep brain stimulators. The near future should offer artificial pancreas systems, synthetic trachea, and lab-grown organs. Going from the big to the small, medical nanotechnology, the manipulation of materials at the scale of nanometers, one billionth of a meter, is also progressing. Microscopic materials and devices are used to deliver drugs directly to diseased cells or to improve the sensitivity and precision of diagnostic imaging, like in MRIs. Nanomaterials can mimic the structure of biological tissues, making them useful in regenerative medicine. This includes developing new therapies for repairing damaged tissues and organs, potentially revolutionizing the treatment of various diseases and injuries. In a future where nanotechnology continues to advance, humans could integrate nanobots into their bodies to enhance their abilities, repair damage, fight diseases, and possibly even halt aging. These nanobots could eventually become so integrated with human biology that they would alter the human organism at a fundamental level, leading to a form of life that is a blend of organic and machine. This new form of existence would be characterized by a seamless integration of biological and nanotechnological components potentially leading to abilities and forms of consciousness far beyond what is currently possible for humans. Underway since 2016, Elon Musk's Neuralink project is designed to create devices that can be implanted in the human brain to, to facilitate direct communication between the brain and computers. The long-term vision is to enable symbiosis between humans and artificial intelligence, potentially addressing various neurological conditions and expanding human cognitive abilities. Of course, once a working brain-machine interface, a BMI, exists, it's not too distant to consider humans connecting mind-to-mind -mind across an online social network. Elon Musk has speculated about the long-term possibility of merging human consciousness with AI or enabling a form of consensual telepathy, but these ideas remain very speculative. While none of these medical or network upgrades would directly cause extinction, I can see where they would create a last common ancestor scenario. Over time, upgraded humans and organic humans would likely keep to their own communities in sufficient numbers to cause a genetic split. While you may not be packing your bags to move to asteroid 16 Psyche anytime soon, it seems pretty certain that in the centuries ahead, humans will be setting up hearth and home far from the green fields of Earth. As far as the solar system is concerned, we're in the early days of Columbus or Vasco da Gama. No matter what possibilities Queen Isabella I of Castile and King Ferdinand II of Aragon imagined when backing the first voyages to the New World, the eventual founding, rise, and tremendous power of the United States was not among them. It's more than Mars. Humans may well settle the moon, the clouds of Venus, the interior of asteroids, giant rotating habitats called O'Neill cylinders, and perhaps eventually build a Dyson sphere around the sun. As they do this, and as generation after generation build on early footholds away from Earth, humans may have some evolving to do. In some places, our skin and eyes might evolve or be medically altered to withstand different radiation levels and atmospheric conditions. Lower gravity could lead to taller, more slender human physiques over generations with less muscle and bone density. Prolonged life in controlled environments could lead to 
weakened immune systems as exposure to various pathogens would be limited. Without natural light, circadian rhythms and vision could adapt uniquely. The end result might be humans who could never comfortably return to Earth, or even adapt from one spaceborne environment to another easily. And as those populations increase, the fate of today's original ground-bound humans might be sealed. Ultimately, space will be where the opportunities are, and the populations of true Earthers are likely to dwindle over time. Hey, Dreamforge Magazine is a science and fantasy fiction magazine founded on the idea that the human adventure is just beginning. Our stories aren't about apocalypse, doom scrolling, or dystopia. Speculative fiction should be the literature of hope, genius, determination, and ideas. And that's what you'll find in our pages. We often use the tagline, in all worlds and times, our tales revolve around those individuals and group who bring meaning and value to the world, whose actions are of consequence, and whose dreams are the vanguard of things to come. We've had the privilege of publishing first stories like David Hankins' A Properly Spiced Gingerbread, and proudly watched as he went on to publish his first book, Death and the Taxman. We've published a new story by Hugo and Nebula nominee Bruce McAllister, only to see that tale, Sita, almost immediately picked up in a collection of Bruce's best, Stealing God and Other Stories, and we've published several works by Mary Soon Lee, an award-winning poet and author whose fiction has been anthologized in the year's best science fiction. Personally, I love one of her latest accomplishments, Elemental Haiku, poems to honor the periodic table three lines at a time. Dreamforge stories have even been collected in the anthology Worlds of Light and Darkness from Uproar Books. If you love science fiction and fantasy, don't miss out. Support us at the digital or print level on Patreon or at our website. Links will be in the description. A few dollars a month from you helps bring great stories to life. You'll love it. Join our community at Dreamforge. Another path to extinction is the possibility of humans simply becoming post-biological. The singularity, as envisioned by futurist Ray Kurzweil, is a transformative event anticipated to occur when artificial intelligence surpasses human intelligence and humans merge fundamentally with their own technology. Kurzweil's vision of the singularity is underpinned by the law of accelerating returns, which looks at technological progress, especially computing, as something that grows exponentially. This growth is not linear, but accelerates as we build more advanced tools, which in turn facilitate even faster progress. According to Kurzweil, once artificial intelligence reaches a point of human-like cognitive abilities, it will quickly surpass human intelligence due to its ability to self-improve at an unprecedented rate. As these technologies accelerate, Kurzweil envisions a future where we enhance our bodies and minds with technology, leading to augmented abilities and prolonged lifespans. This could mean embedding nanobots in our brains to directly interface with computers or using advanced biotechnology to eradicate diseases and aging. Another scenario offers the possible obsolescence of human biology. If machine intelligence offers greater efficiency, durability, and capabilities than organic brains, there might be a shift away from biological existence itself. Either humans could gradually merge with machines or machine intelligence could simply outpace and replace biological forms relegating humans to a lesser role or even leading to our extinction. Another aspect of this transition is the potential loss of human uniqueness and autonomy. In a world dominated by superintelligent AI, human desires and values might be overshadowed or manipulated. There is a risk that in the pursuit of enhancing intelligence and capabilities, the essence of what makes us human, our emotions, experiences, and imperfections might be lost or deemed irrelevant. For Homo sapiens, extinction might not be a cataclysmic event, but a gradual evolution into something new, a post-human existence. This new form of existence could offer unimaginable benefits, such as eradication of disease and suffering, elimination of physical and mental limitations, and even immortality. However, it also poses significant risks, including loss of control over our destiny and the possibility of creating a superintelligent entity that doesn't align with human values and ethics at all.
What do I think is the most likely of these things to happen? That's easy. Everything, everywhere, all at once, including things we can't and won't see coming. I think the future of Homo sapiens is one of extraordinary transformation. The integration of genetic modification, cybernetics, and nanotechnology, along with adaptation to diverse solar system environments, and Ray Kurzweil's vision of the singularity will not be isolated events, but a multifaceted evolution occurring simultaneously and in an interconnected manner. The advances in CRISPR and other gene editing technologies have opened the door to eradicating genetic diseases, enhancing physical and cognitive abilities, and even extending human lifespan. These capabilities are not just theoretical, but are progressively becoming practical realities. As our understanding of the human genome deepens, we are likely to witness a deliberate, self-directed evolution of our species. Simultaneously, the field of cybernetics and nanotechnology is advancing at an unprecedented pace. The integration of technology into the human body through cybernetic implants and nanoscale devices will enhance our physical and cognitive abilities. These technologies will not just be for repairing or replacing lost functions, but will be used to augment our existing capabilities, blurring the lines between human and machine. Furthermore, the concept of a telepathic human network facilitated by advanced neural interfaces is rapidly transitioning from science fiction to potential reality. Projects like Elon Musk's Neuralink are indicative of a future where human thoughts and experiences can be shared instantaneously, creating a new form of communication and collective intelligence. Adaptations to various environments in the solar system is another frontier. With the current pace of space exploration and colonization efforts, it's conceivable that humans will modify themselves to better suit extraterrestrial habitats, be it on Mars, the Moon, or immense space habitats that will themselves be independent city-states. This adaptation might include physiological changes to withstand different gravitational forces, radiation levels, and atmospheres. Finally, we have Ray Kurzweil's vision of the singularity, where artificial intelligence surpasses human intelligence and humans merge with their advancing technologies. As AI integrates with human cognition, it will not only augment our intellectual abilities, but also potentially lead us to question the very essence of what it means to be human. In conclusion, these advancements are not isolated phenomena, but are interlinked components of a broader evolutionary trajectory. They represent a collective leap toward a future where humanity transcends its biological limitations. It's a scenario where everything changes, everywhere, all at once, redefining our species in ways we are just beginning to comprehend. My apologies to the audience that wanted to hear about how Homo sapiens kills itself off leaving the Earth and universe alone to recover from the depredations of your species. Oh, Death, that's never going to happen. Perhaps some would like that because on some level they know that they themselves and their ideas, their values, beliefs, histories, and favorite TV shows are all doomed in the long run to be forgotten, repudiated, or completely misunderstood. Don't we all have a kind of sneaking desire that if we ourselves have to end, everything should end with us? Or if not that, then that the country, religions, and values we hold should go on forever while future generations value our staunch defense of the right principles in the trenches of history. Not me, my friend. I, for one, live in the moment. The future has its own path to blaze. It is as unlikely to become a flawless utopia as it is to devolve into an unlivable dystopia. To those living it, whatever form they may take, it will just be Tuesday, with its own disasters and triumphs, joys and challenges, tedium and fascinations, along with reasons for both hope and despair. What we've started with our human civilization may not be immortal, but it is nowhere near its ending point. That you can't see beyond the problems of today does not mean that the next generation cannot. That Homo sapiens may go extinct someday does not mean that Homo novus will not continue in our footsteps. As our ancestors survived an ice-bound world, we will survive any climate catastrophe, or avoid it, or build whole new environments both on and off Earth. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed this, we'll make more for you. If you'd like to read more on this subject, check out the reference links in the description. And don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and support us on Patreon, where you can get a subscription to Dreamforge magazine. In every issue our science and fantasy fiction authors prove that the human adventure is just beginning. Hey, it's time to explore your passions, honor the truth, embrace humility, and foster kindness. Together, we can build a welcoming future for everyone.